This is the next part of the design. It's uh, the IR main box. It looks like a little tiny box, but it does a whole lot. As you see, it's got my nice um, blue masking tape around it with the um, eloquent Sharpie lettering that says prototype. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is just so I know. Don't get rid of this one. This is the first one I made. Um, the the LED on top is a is an indicator to know when it is receives a uh, a pulse or some kind of hit or request from uh, one of the one sensor units. This LED right here is actually an infrared LED that can shoot back and this inside here is another sensor and then this right here is the USB port where it hooks up to your system. This um, is a power external power supply. You can ignore that. This mainly has use um, when you're doing range testing because you can hook like a like a nine volt, uh, like a six by you know, just the same kind of pack that you have for your one sensor unit, you can hook that up into here and then you can use it for range testing. Uh, it just gives it a power source to where you can um, find out how far uh, you're reaching signals with it because by putting a, a battery pack in this and then using one of your wands, you can, you know, find out how far it can go because it'll light up this. It, that's mainly what that's used for. But um, in the course of the game, it's not really useful. It's more you know, for other things. But um, but anyhow, I, I mentioned before that I was going to tell you how this game, how the flow of the game works, and I will. Uh, as I mentioned, the game is able to record through software uh, who hit who. We can save data, uh, save it to your, um, to your to a file on your system that has all your information. Here's how it does it, because there is a unique quirk to it. Um, originally, I was going to use RF transceivers but that would have prohibitively added to the cost and then there's range, there's reliability issues with that and, um, and all kinds of you know government regulations nonetheless that govern RF frequencies you know using the right band and, and the not too much power and there's just a lot of stuff that goes to it and so even though that would have been the most ideal it's also the most expensive, the most trouble it would have jacked the cost up and it might even have made it impossible for me to get this to any kind of market because you know money is an issue. So I wanted to still have all the functionality um, but without having to deal with all of that problem because I didn't want to just make something stripped down like the big box store. So I came up with this idea to use this box. So how it works is you hook this up through USB port to the system software which is going to be the next thing I'll show you. and. <clears throat> Uh, once it's hooked up and you have your system software started, you'll start the, you'll enter in all the stuff, which I'll show you later. And then when you start your game, um, you actually, once your wand is strapped on and everything is powered up, you shoot at this box. You shoot right here towards here. It's it's not that hard to hit it. I mean, you just aim in the general direction and you're going to hit it. And um, and when you're shooting it, essentially what you're doing is you're requesting. Um, activation. The activation, what it does is it sends a request through the USB line to the system software. It looks you up by wand ID and it sends all your information about the character that's linked to that wand ID back and then it shoots you back through here and it does this all in a fraction of a second. So if you shoot it, it'll shoot you back so quick you won't even know what happened but there was a lot that went on there and it activates you with all your information. Now, um, since we don't have uh, RF frequencies, this doesn't actually know um, when you've been hit in the moment you've been hit. So that's where the quirk or the trade-off of this game happens. When you get hit, you get deactivated, but inside of your sensor pack, it saves the information about the last hit. So the way that you get turned back on is you actually have to come back to the main box and shoot it, and then it, and it, sends, it knows the difference between a request for data and a reactivation based on context. So when you're trying to get reactivated, it sends a report essentially, and it reactivates you, but it sends the information about the hit back to the uh, the system, so then the system is able to report it on a, on a feed, live feed, and so as soon as you reactivate, you're not only getting reactivated, but it's also reporting the hit to the system software so it gets recorded. Now, there is the issue that sometimes people shoot at it, and maybe they were, their hand was covering their sensor or something, so it doesn't get reactivated, and I thought of that. So. In that case, you just keep trying until it 
it reactivates you. Um, but then there's the issue of, well, you know, wouldn't it get reported twice if it takes you two times? Well, I thought of that. So I actually have a parity checker in there that where for each hit, it has a unique ID, a hit count ID that sends. So then that way, if it sends duplicate requests, it won't re-record the hit. It's still, um, it still only records it once. No matter how many times, it could take you a hundred times to reactivate. It won't really take that long. If it does, it's just something wrong with you. <laughs> but uh, but even if it did, uh, it's only going to report that hit once. So it does check for redundancy. So that's a good thing. So and then and then also. Um, uh, because of the lack of RF, uh, there's a timing issue, and that you know each game is 10 minutes. But how does it know 10 minutes? You know if you don't have the the frequency coming from main. Well, that's another unique workaround I had. Um, when the first person that activates, it starts the timer at 10 minutes. Then from there, um, each subsequent person that activates, it part of the activation is sending over the remaining time left. So. Your your um, your internals of your sensor is still going to be able to keep the proper time. It, it, there is a slight margin of error; it's like within a few seconds, no more than ten seconds difference. But um, but yeah, it's it's within that 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 margin. Um, the bits are sent for that a bit code, so it, it knows. So everybody's um, wand should go off more or less at the same time. So but yeah, this uh, this is an important little box and. Um, there's a lot going on here, and, and this is the, the, the thing that interfaces your wands to the computer system. Very important. In a minute here, I'll uh, show you uh, how it lights up when, um, when I shoot it with the sensor pack.